What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at lead code problem number 136, single number, marked as easy. Let's get into it. So the problem statement says, given a non-empty array of integer nums, every element appears twice except for one. Find that single one. Follow up, could you implement a solution with a linear runtime complexity and without using extra memory? So an example would be we will have in our input array 2, 2, 1, so 2 appear to, appears twice, 1 only appears once, 1 would be the element we're looking for. Another example would be 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 4 is the only element that appears once, and I'll put 4. I'm going to go through three approaches that I really like, starting out with counter or hash table. So in Python we have something called counter, which basically counts the elements in an array and assigns each element a number of how often they appear pretty much. Yeah, that's why it's called counter. So if we use a counter to count all elements in our array, we would know which ones appear just once and which appear twice. And then we just need to filter that counter and put out everything that has one as an appearance. And there's only one that has that, so we can just return the first element that fulfills that condition. So let's call that one C and create that from nums and let's just print that right now for you to see how it looks like it's basically a dictionary or yeah in other languages you could call it a hash tablet hash table and as you can see we have two in here as a key and the value would be two so two appears twice one appears once cool right now all we need to do is go through that counter so for n and c so n would be a number in that counter could call it num as well but let's do n because it's shorter and if n the value of n in c we're going to have to look that up using our dictionary notation if that is one we want to return n n is the key one is the value in this case. So it could be another test case, let's put in some other values, let's put in a three instead of one. And let's print that out as well again for you to see. Ooh, return n. Let's do it again. I don't have premium anymore. So in this case, a three would have the value one and we're gonna give out that value because it's the only one that fulfills that condition. And that works because uh, Python has that counter. We could implement it ourselves by going through that nums array and just creating our dictionary or hash table ourselves. But counter makes it more convenient and you can use it for many problems on lead code. That's why I really like this one. Anyways, um, Creating a counter is O of n complexity in terms of runtime and it also requires n space. So we're just going to create that counter and then go through it once. That should be O of n as well. And then just do, do that comparison, look up is constant and return n. So overall runtime complexity would be O of n just like space complexity. Let's go to our second solution. And when I'm thinking of arrays with just numbers and comparing them and how many appear once or twice, I think of sets and sets and set operations are often a good way to solve these problems using less resources. And in this case, there's a mathematical way of solving that, which is quite clever and that's why I'm going to present it. So set allows us to reduce that array to all its element just appearing once. It basically tells us which elements appear in that array no matter how often. So if we create the set of nums we get all elements just once and in this array nums all appear twice except for one that just appears once. So if we sum that up and uh, double it, 
that should be the sum of all elements appearing twice, right? And that is almost the case for our initial array nums. Just one element is removed. So one just appears once. Apart from that, everything is the same. So if we compare that to the sum of our initial array sum uh, nums, we should get that one element. Because that one element makes the difference between yeah, a complete array of everything appearing twice, which we created here, and the actual query uh, array where which just appears once. So the difference of that should be our result. So we can straight up return the result of that equation and get an accepted output, which is very cool. In terms of runtime and space complexity, Sadly, that doesn't really optimize anything. It's just an alternative solution that is very cool to come up with because sum goes through that entire array nums set as well to create that set. And in terms of space, we need to store, um, we need something to store set. And that's why we have O of N for both runtime and space complexity. Sadly, but there is a better way of doing that and fulfilling that follow-up condition of implementing a solution with a linear runtime complexity and without using extra memory. Let's get into it. So for the final solution, we're going to use bit manipulation, which is outlined in the official solution, which is very well done and the author should get more praise. And so we're going to switch straight over there as an exception. Don't usually do this, but I think this one explains it pretty much perfectly. So for this approach, it uses the XOR operator and bit manipulation, as I said. So if we take the XOR of zero and some bit, it will return that bit. So doing that operation with zero is just going to return itself. So we're going to start out using zero as to not change our input. What's important here is that if we take the same two elements with our XO operator, it's going to cancel out and return zero, which is perfect for our plan of getting the single element because every element that appears twice is going to cancel itself out. So if we have two, two, three in our array, two and two are going to cancel itself out and we have three left, which is what we want, right? If we start out using zero, um, 3 and 0 is going to resolve to 3 as well, so 0 is just like a dummy we're using. Also the last bullet point points out that exclusive OR is commutative, so it doesn't matter which order elements come in for our operation to return the result in the same way. So we could use that solution outlined down below to get time complexity of O of n and space complexity of O of 1. And if we run that code, of course it's going to turn out to be accepted, but we can optimize this one even further by reducing our space complexity. We can use the first element of our nums array to even further optimize memory by storing our result in that first space. So we're going to iterate through that array again, but store our result in the first element, first spot. So we're going to iterate from 1 and use the first element already to do our operation, which is going to look as following. So I'm going to overwrite that by using XOR on it. Yes, and in the end, we're just going to return that first element. So instead of using zero and then going through the entire array, we're going to start out with the first element, which is going to be itself anyways if we uh, do XOR with zero. So we're just going to start out from there and then override our result in that first spot and return it. So that should 
optimize it even further and also give us an accepted output. Let's submit that code and hopefully get an accepted solution as well. It's accepted. That's been pretty much it for that video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it's a cool problem. It has a lot of upvotes and it allows you to get quite creative, use that counter solution, come up with a brute force solution first, which I didn't go through, come up with a creative math based solution using that set sum and also use bitwise manipulation, which is very cool and can apply to other problems as well. It's probably the hardest to come up with by far, but if you wrap your head around how it works and in which situations to use it, it can be quite powerful and allows you to reduce space and memory complexity. Anyways, I'm gonna go through more lead code problems on this channel. I have an entire playlist based on SQL or SQL database problems and now I'm going through Python. So make sure to stick around and maybe subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.